Hey there, we are mid-August, so it's time for a little bit of an update, and that's because there are some new features that are now baked into the software for the GP Star uh, kits. So what we've done in the past probably month, if you've followed one of my previous videos, I did do a walkthrough of replacing the power cell LEDs uh, from 13 to 15, which are now RGB enabled so they can change colors. Also from Frito is a new 20 LED set. It's a set of four uh, PCBs with five LEDs each. They replace the stock hardware for the HasLab equipment. And that gives you edge to edge coverage that looks so much better. And these also color change as well. There's new menus that will let you change some settings. So when you do the upgrades uh, for the for the hardware on the pack, you can then use the hardware to change the software configuration. So what I'm gonna cover is first, let's, let's fire everything up. And right now we've already got a few glitches as it were. So if you take a look, you see a blinking white light at the top of the power cell. That is because the software's stock configuration is to work with everything that the HasLab hardware does. And that is a 13 LED power cell with a 12 LED cyclotron lid. So what we have is some glitching because the software thinks that that is part of the cyclotron because all of these are connected. It goes one through 13 and then the next LED in sequence it thinks is down here. We need to change that. So I'm gonna turn off my wand, turn off the pack and there is what's called an EEPROM menu now. There's two EEPROM menus. The upper is essentially the LED configuration. The lower one is going to be for uh, basically performance and personalizations, but we'll, we'll go into that. So in order to get to these, there's a special sequence. You have to press the intensify button and then toggle this five times. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, now what we get is you can kind of see the LEDs in action here. There's five levels to match up with the five LEDs you get with the, the HasLab equipment. Here, let me move this out of the way. And as always, there's gonna be a button, uh, an action with the intensify button, and there's gonna be an action associated with the wing barrel switch. Now mine's replaced, uh, I'll go into this a little bit later, but that's, that's now a light, so my button's not here. It's been moved over, it's a real push button. Let's see what menu one. GRB inner cyclotron LEDs. So pressing the intensify button changes the inner cyclotron LEDs from RGB to GRB. Um, if you look closely at the specs when you buy your inner cyclotron LEDs, the manufacturer should state what the color pattern is because there are some types that have been purchased already that are GRB. We need in software to flip the red and the green colors in order for everything to come out looking correct. RGB in the cyclotron LEDs. So you press this button once, it flips to GRB, you press it again, it flips back to RGB. Done. We're going to come back to what the wing button does on this in just a second. We're going to finish setting up the numbers of LEDs. 12 in the cyclotron LEDs. All right, so right now this is set to 12. We're going to set it, we're going to push it again. 23 in the cyclotron LEDs. 23. 24 in the cyclotron. 35 in the cyclotron LEDs. All right, so it's not showing it right now, but inside here I have a NeoPixel ring with 35 LEDs. So I've just cycled through. There's only, there's set options. Uh, that you step through and it's popular sizes that we know will work. All right, the next one is 15 power cell LEDs. 15 power cell LEDs. So now this is set correctly. The other option is 13, which is the default. And if you notice, we got some extra lights down here. So it's sort of updated in real time. We can now see we're almost going around. All right, let's go up to the fourth menu. 40 cyclotron LEDs. All right, so that's 40 cyclotron LEDs. That is made for a NeoPixel ring that has 40 pixels, and that is specific because we found that 40 pixels will fit precisely in the dead center of all four of the lenses, and that is the only size that will work there. 20 cyclotron LEDs. The next is 20, which is what I have here with the Fruto technology, and you really want the right number of LEDs for the sequence to work correctly, so even though it was completing it was showing all of the LEDs. We want to use 20 because that's what this was made, this particular one was made for. 
And if you press it again, it just repeats the sequence. So each of these, if you go past it, don't worry, just push the button again and you'll step through. All right, so now we're at 20. Now, if we go up to the fifth menu, this is our set or erase. If I were to press the intensify button, it would wipe out my EEPROM settings. It would just erase them and basically go with whatever stock out of the software. What I want to do is save. Save settings. And there we go. Now we have saved it. So now if we start up the pack, everything should look correct. Now, if we look at the power cell, it's going all the way from the bottom to the top. We don't have that glitching anymore. And the cyclotron is working as expected. All right, so if we go all the way up, there's our standard proton stream. If we go, if we increase, we get a slightly more yellow. So we go all the way to the top and we have yellow. And notice there's there's some slight differences. I just want to point this out while I'm in here. So the low power stream has one particular sound. When you start turning up the volume, the hum changes in the wand itself. And you also get the more powerful blast uh, on the proton stream. And it speeds up that flicker on the uh, wand tip. So let's... I know I'm jumping around here. There's a lot to cover. So this hat light, this is a replacement. This is supported by the hardware, uh, but you have to install this if you want. Uh, there's This one's probably minimal. You just have to drill through the top of the gun box and you can pop a lens and an LED into this. No biggie. This one's more involved. If you take this one out, you lose the button. So you have to replace it with a real push button here. Um, I drilled basically all the way through mine you can see some of the wires coming out. They run inside the barrel under the grip. And I replaced that stupid little uh, rubber fake uh, wire, wire loom with actual wires wrapped in uh, electrical tape. So this is, this is probably as accurate as you're going to get to the movie. This is heat shrink tubing over the top. Again, trying to mimic what they did in the movie. And so that's it. So that between... Uh, hat light 2, hat light 1, and the strobe on the tip. Those are your optional upgrades for the wand, and I think that really completes the look and functionality that you're going to get at, out of this. All right, so let's move on. So we got our normal uh, video game modes here. We got slime. See, we changed the colors on the cyclotron. We changed the colors on the power cell. And when you go to stasis, same thing. Hit it again, we're in Mason Blast. Now we've got orange or, or sort of an amber. Now this is a special mode. Uh, you'll know it because the slow blow and the clipper LEDs will be blinking. What this does is a, is a vent mode that will automatically, or your only option is when you press the intensify, it basically triggers the vent sequence. So if you ever want to vent the pack, uh, you can just do this and boom right into the venting mode. So if we press this again, we're now in the uh, audio menu mode. So this is where you can come in here and go down to the bottom, start playing tracks. When you go to level two, you can advance and uh, you can go to the next track or the previous track. So intensify and the wing button move either forward or back respectively. And if you can't quite hear it, if you press and hold while I'm in level three, that will turn down the sound effects. So you just press and hold intensify while turning the dial. That turns down the sound effects. If you press and hold the wing button and turn the dial, that turns down the music. So now you have individual control of those two things direct from in the one menu. You don't have to turn the pack off to make these particular adjustments. You're already in the, you're already in the jukebox mode. See, I can turn the volume back up on the sound effects, and then I can press and hold and turn the volume back up on the music. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off. <laughs> and then, so that's the volume mode. So at level four, the wing button. 
will cycle through the devices. So it goes from the inner cyclon, cyclotron to the outer cyclotron lid to the power cell. And then what you can do is press and hold intensify and then turn the dial and it changes the brightness. So if you don't like that the, um, so if you don't like that the Fruto power cell LEDs are now super bright compared to the stock ones, you can turn the brightness down to your liking or bring it all the way up. And so by cycling, cycling through these, now I'm in the cyclotron, you see I've completely dimmed the cyclotron, it's practically off. So there you go, so there's the fourth menu item, which is while the pack is running, you can change the brightness of the outer and inner cyclotron and the power cell. Those are the only devices that you can change. Come back up to level five, press button, and we're back into Proton Screen. All right, so that is the walkthrough on setting up the LED counts for your devices and walking through the video game modes. So now, while we are powered down, we can get into an additional menu. So the first time you press the wing button, you get into the standard audio menu, which we just went through. So the exact same options are here. If you keep turning, you go down into a sub menu and you'll know that because the slow blow lights up. Now you have options like cross the streams. Cross the streams. So when you turn that on, it turns off the video game modes. So you can't do the color changing uh, modes. Your only option is throw a proton stream or throw a proton stream and then kick it into the uh, cross the streams effect. Uh, if we keep going down through the menu, these are options like smoke disabled, enable and disable smoke. smoke. Enabled. Overheating disabled. Overheating. Overheating enabled. Enabled and disabled. And keep going down. Cyclotron counterclockwise. So that changes the counterclockwise or clockwise direction on the cyclotron. Cyclotron three LEDs. The three LED cyclotron mode versus one, one LED. LED. That's that's sort of a personal preference. Um, if you're if you've swapped out to the newer hardware, you're probably going to want to stay on the default, which is just one LED, and it's going to light that. LED that's perfectly in the center of each lens. Proton pack vibration disabled. Okay, so vibration has three ways that it can be. It can be disabled. Proton pack vibration enabled. Enabled, which means it's always on. Proton pack vibration firing enabled. And then firing, uh, basically on, enabled only for firing. Neutrona one vibration disabled. And same for the Neutrona one. If you have the vibration motor still in there, I don't. Neutrona one, vi Neutrona one, vibration firing enabled. Neutrona one, vibration disabled. And that steps through the same. It, 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 you either disable it, you enable it uh, for all the time, plus firing, or only while firing. All right, and then we come down here. The last option is our modes. Press it once, you go into 1984. Press it again, you go into 89. And then back to afterlife. So it just cycles through those modes. So let's show real quick what does this look like in 1984 mode. And we'll power up. And there we go. So that's what the, this is the Fruto uh, LEDs. So here's the 1984 mode. Now you may notice while we're firing, Every once in a while, you hear an extra bit of crunchiness in the audio. Those are the proton stream effects. We're gonna go into the other EEPROM menu and I'm gonna show you some features uh, that you can turn on and off. Uh, one of those being the extra impact sounds uh, that you would get. So that is uh, across the streams. So basically you can press and hold the intensify and then press the wand wing or press that. Then the intensify button. And then the, uh, the mix mode uh, is a, just slightly different, but for the most part, uh, it's those two buttons. So we no longer have, we no longer have control over a menu here. That's the only downside is because this doubles as our uh, secondary fire button. We take away the menu options uh, and cross the streams mode. And you can see this is uh, pretty responsive. So you hear the sounds uh, come out of the pack uh, as soon as you press buttons.
Let's get out of the Cross the Streams mode, and let's Cross also go back mode. to, oops. Video game mode. All right, so video game mode, 89. Let's go back to Afterlife. There's something I want to show real quick here. All right, so I forgot to show this. This is another update that was done uh, in the recent changes. So let's let the Cyclotron get up to speed so it does this ramp up. And we're, we were at full power. Press and hold, watch the speed. The LEDs actually go faster the longer you hold down the trigger and are firing. And then when you let off the trigger, the pack responds and kind of goes back down to the normal uh, spin speed. Let's show that again. I'm gonna go down a level. Yeah, hopefully that was uh, visible. You can see the spin increases on the LEDs uh, the longer you hold down the trigger and are firing a stream. And you don't overheat as quickly when you're on levels four and below. It takes longer, it takes longer to overheat the lower the power. It makes perfect sense, hopefully. <laughs> All right, and then the last thing I wanna show here is take a close look when I power down the wand and you watch this begin to spin down. Okay, watch. There we go. See how we actually had a little bit of time between that LED going off and this one coming on? That is what we call the simulated ring effect. And that's important because we're gonna get into the next EEPROM menu where you can enable or disable that feature. Basically, uh, since the original prop used a spinning light, a physical spinning light uh, to make that effect, we essentially make up for the timing between these two points when you are spinning up or spinning down so that it appears as if the cyclotron spin, it's disappearing behind here and then reappears behind this lens. So as it slows down, it takes longer to get to the next ring and vice versa when it starts spinning up. You'll see there's a little bit of a gap. And then basically once it gets up to full speed, uh, we, we essentially kick out of that mode and we basically just keep running and that way we can, you know, we just jump lens to lens so it keeps that effect going that it's, it's faster. All right, so that is the simulated ring effect. And now that I've mentioned that, let's go into the other EEPROM menu. So bottom one, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so now we're in the configuration EEPROM menu. Proton mixed effects disabled. Okay, so if we press intensify, that's proton mixed effects. Basically what that means is the impact sounds that you hear uh, at random intervals, that is either turned on or turned off. Proton mixed effects enabled. Okay, so if I turn it back on, then what will happen is every few seconds while you're throwing a stream, you'll hear some sparks and other impact sounds to make it sound like the, the stream is actually hitting something. So if you don't like that, you turn it off. This button, extra neutronal wand sounds enabled. Extra neutronal wand sounds. This is disabled by feet, uh, disabled by default. What that does is it causes some of the gun ramp up sounds and other effects to come through the pack. For the most part, the sounds that come from the wand are supposed to come from the wand and vice versa. Uh, so to keep those separate, that that's the default out of the box. If you want to have the gun ramp up sound and some of the extra beeps and everything come out of the pack, you just press this button and you enable that feature. Extra neutronal one sounds disabled. My preference is to have it disabled, but that's, again, that's my preference. This is, uh, this allows you to select what you want out of your pack. Cyclotron counterclockwise. All right. Now this lets us set the counterclockwise or clockwise default. So basically every time you power down at the battery and then power back up, it'll always pick up the default, whether you want uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. Clockwise. Cyclotron simulate ring disabled. All right, so I just press the wing button while on that level two. That disables the cyclotron ring effect. So that, that basically means that this, when you ramp up or ramp down, it's gonna jump, the LED is gonna jump from one lens to the next immediately. It's gonna it's gonna ignore 
that effect where it looks like it's actually spinning. And that's primarily for, well, really, that's only for afterlife mode since 84 and 89 just do the sequential lighting of each one, so it has no effect there. Cyclotron simulator enabled. Okay, so I'm going to enable that for me. I like that effect. Overheating disabled. All right, overheating. Overheating enabled. Smoke disabled. Smoke enabled. So these options let you affect either overheating enabled or disabled, and then smoke uh, enabled or disabled. So you can set that as your preference. Now level four. Cross the streams. So this lets you set cross the streams as the default or cross the streams mix. Cross the streams mix. Video game modes. Or video game mode. So if you are a purist and you just want you know, just the movie sounds and you want to be able to do cross the streams, then you can set this as a pre preference in the EEPROM. And so every time you boot up, you'll automatically be in cross the streams mode. Uh, I'm going to prefer the video game modes for this next reason. Spectral modes enabled. So this is a new feature uh, that was just added called spectral modes. What this does is it is only going to work if you have the RGB LEDs for the cyclotron and RGB power cell lights. If you have the stock HasLab equipment, you're going to see no effect and no benefit from this. And that is because this mode does all kinds of funky colors, and I'm going to show you exactly what that does. I'm going to go up to level five, same as before. I'm going to press this button to uh, set and save. If I were to press this button down here, it would just erase and, and exit. So I'm going to Saving settings. save and exit. So now I'm out of the EEPROM menu. So let's show what Spectral Modes does. All right, so boot up. Everything's pretty much looking like normal. Got a proton stream. We're going to change to Slime Mode. There we go, Slime Mode. Stasis Mode. Meson Blast. Now, here we go into spectral modes. Here, I'm going to turn off this light to make it a little more pronounced. So basically what this does is when you are in this, uh, this is the first of three spectral modes. There's uh, what we call uh, rainbow mode, there's a uh, holiday mode, and then there's a custom mode. So the rainbow mode basically does exactly that. It's just a fun little, I call it party mode as well. Uh, it just turns this thing into a color changing wonder. And it is, it's, it affects the inner cyclotron. So basically it steps through every color on the uh, spectrum. And uh, same with the power cell, because there's only 15 LEDs up there. It sort of does this nice little ombre uh, between colors. So every time it starts a new, it sort of starts with the last color and then proceeds to the next the next shades. All right, so that's the spectral rainbow mode. Now, if you select the next one, this one had to do this. Um, so it does this kind of like candy cane effect uh, when it's pumping out the uh, proton stream. It basically goes from red to green and just flip-flops between the two colors. And you can kind of see it on the on the uh, rings here. It basically alternates red and green. Same with the power cell. If you look carefully, it essentially does this sort of little uh, candy stripe uh, look there. All right, so that is the holiday mode. And now next is custom mode. So we're gonna get into this one a little bit more. So by default, this just throws a purple stream, just to make it completely different from everything else. Nothing else uses purple, or if you want to call this the Mace Windu Special, this mf -er is purple. So, uh, yeah, so that's your default color. And then, so those three modes give way to the vent mode. Yeah, so, same as before, the vent. All right, and then once it boots back up, we're in the menu mode. Everything goes uh, white for the for the menu mode, and then we're back into Proton Stream. All right, so that is a quick preview of Spectral Mode. So what does that mean in terms of uh, Spectral Custom? So we're going to go back into the top menu, 
And we didn't explore all of the features in here, and that's because we had to turn on spectral mode first in the configuration. So we came in here first, we set the number of LEDs, we turned on the spectral, and then I'm gonna show you this, uh, what this really looks like now. So two, three, four, five. Okay, so remember before when we came into this mode, all the lights were on and it was purple? This is why. Uh, because what you can do now is you can step through. Remember we went through basically the primary function of the intensify knob. All right, so let's look at the inner cyclotron. So that is purple. Okay, so here's, what sh here's how this works. You press and hold the wing button up here. And now as you cycle through, as you turn this knob, it's cycling through the colors. So it goes, if you turn it clockwise, you're gonna get more uh, towards the red side. And then if you turn it the other way, it's gonna go back down through all the colors. So it's gonna go from purple through blue and then to green, yellow, orange, red. So what this lets you do is choose a specific color that you want for the inner cyclotron. So this lets you pick your personal preference on what you want the cyclotron color to be. Spoiler alert, we're gonna change colors for the power cell, the outer cyclotron, and even the wand. All right, so I wanna go back. I actually kinda of like that purple, and I'll, sh I'll explain why in a minute. Let's see, so it takes a bit because you gotta turn, it, it's going one step at a time, so you can really dial this into the color that you like. All right, so there's the default purple. So I can't quite see this on the video probably, but I'm actually making this a little deeper purple than it was originally. Okay, I like that. So I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it there. So now my inner cyclotron is set. Go up to level two, we're now in the outer cyclotron. So now you see I just made that red. And then same as before, if you keep turning the dial, eventually it's going to uh, step through the other color. See, it's getting more blue. And eventually we'll hit and then we're at teal. Now we're getting into green. Now we're getting into yellow, orange, amber, and we'll hit red again. So basically red is at the top and bottom of uh, this, this uh, scale. In this case, I want my outer cyclotron and inner cyclotron to match, and that's because uh, in just a few short weeks, I'll be at Dragon Con here in Atlanta, Georgia, and their colors are purple and yellow, kind of LSU colors, which actually, that good segue here. So this will let you, since you can customize, hey, do whatever you want. If you want your proton pack to be uh, your favorite sports ball team colors, feel free to do that. There we go. So now I like that. I like that purple. It's a little deeper than what was originally out there. All right. Now go up to the next level. I think this one now will be the power cell. Yeah, there we go. Power cell is changing. So now it's a little more red. I want to go all the way down. I want this to be more of a uh, yellow. Every turn of this dial where you feel the little click, that's one more, one more notch. That is, so that is actually yellow to me. Uh, might be washed out in the uh, video. All right, so now let's go up to level four. And then last but not least, we have the wand color. So this one I know, just cause personal preference, I kind of like teal. So I'm gonna go down to blue and sort of figure out, all right, I'm starting to get into green here. There we go, I think that is about right. That's the, let's see if I can really, there we go. There, you can, there we go, we dropped the brightness on the uh, exposure on this. All right, so I've got the teal color that I want and that's it. So now with those set, I just go up to the fifth level menu. Save settings. Saved, all right. So now for the fun part and that's power everything back up. And you step through the menu. So we go to slime mode, stasis mode, meson, spectral rainbow, holiday mode, and now custom. So there we go. Now we're on spectral custom, and I've got my teal proton stream. I've got my purple cyclotron, which should be the purple for the inner and outer as I set them and the color for my power cell is yellow. And that's, 
and then everything else is just going to work exactly the same. You know, you still can get, um, basically it's going to be in the particle stream or proton stream mode. So all five levels work the same way they always did. So the only difference is the wand is, the wand tip is always going to be the same, uh, or the wand barrel is going to be the same color. So on the normal proton stream, it, it ranges from a red up to a uh, more yellow amber color as the power level goes up. This is gonna stay the same. And if we go into an overheat mode, you should see that the vent light carries through the same color as your cyclotron. There we go, so it's, it's doing that purple as well. There we go, final push, and that's it. So, here we go. Whew, that's a lot to get through. Uh, but I hope that makes sense. Uh, those are the new features. So, essentially, EEPROM menu for customizing the number of LEDs. Uh, also gives you the option to change colors in the new spectral mode, which needs to be enabled through the EEPROM settings. And once you set those values, you save them and they will be persisted. So if I turn off my battery, I'm gonna come back in and turn that back on. We'll go back to proton mode by default. But you see, I turned on the preference to keep the spectral mode. So that's, that's gonna be on now by default. Still got my regular modes and there's my there's my custom color. So you turn off the battery, no worries. Uh, everything that you set before is gonna be retained. So when you come back into that custom mode, everything's just the way you set it. And see, I've got my, there's the, uh, there it is. So I've got the simulated ring effect. That's the other one. So the other, uh, the other feature is the simulated ring. I hope that all makes sense. Uh, all of this is in the operation guide, so don't worry if you miss something here. Uh, feel free to go back and watch again, or uh, just refer to the menu uh, operation guide, which talks about the various menu settings, both at runtime and for EEPROM. Enjoy.